Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to Unpacking Truths, where Pastor Kendall and I are going to do our best by the grace of God with the Holy Spirit to unpack the truth of a topic that we all love, politics and religion. Oh, dun, 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 dun. was this your brilliant idea? Yeah, you know what? I'm a glutton for punishment. What can I say? <laughs> the uh, Well, I think it is an important topic. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, in... And a topic that often, as Christians in the church, we avoid. Well, or or do really poorly oh, at. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, we're going to try and do a little better than yeah. poorly here yeah. today. Just a but smidge. we'll see. That'll You'll be the judges of Low that. Low expectations so that we, you know, hopefully hit our goal. <laughs> I'm Pastor Kendall. And I'm Pastor Mo. Welcome to Unpacking Truths, where we dive deep into God's timeless truths for our lives today. Grab your coffee, open your hearts and your minds. Come take this journey with us as we unpack God's truths. I think there is a sense where, um, you know, people have often said, you know, in polite company, you shouldn't talk about religion and politics. Yeah. And I think they say that. Or because, on a first date. Uh, or on a first yeah. date. Unless yeah. you don't like them, use that. Use yeah, that. That, that may be a strategy. But but I think people say that because they know there is so, so much passion yeah. involved in both of those topics that often people start engaging out of their passion yeah. and don't reflect on how it's coming off to others. Right. Or, or maybe the fact not that their face about. is getting really red and yeah. veins are popping out of the side of their head and they're spitting on you yes. on accident because it's protruding from... I'm sorry, I was reliving a family, family <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, so, you know... Mo, I wanted, uh, I mean, there's so many places. I mean, this is a topic you can do multiple, multiple yeah. episodes on, but we're not please, planning on not. that. We're please, shooting it in one. Please, no. We're getting ourselves <laughs> shot in one, one or the other. Um, but I think the one of the places that I want to start yeah. is uh, just engaging something that um, has frustrated me. Yeah. Um, is uh, within the church world. Um, and I have foot in different camps within the church world. Yeah. I have some folks to one side of the spectrum, one to the other, Absolutely. and they point and they say, this is the Christian perspective to have. Yeah. You know, if you're really a Christ follower, here's how you should yeah. see things. Or people on the other side said, if you're really a Christ follower, here's how you should see things. Yeah. And where I wanted to start is just doing this a little bit deeper look at that question. Because for me, when I look at the two-party system here in the United States yeah. with Democratic and Republican parties, what I see is that a core value that each one sort of springs out of a different sort of core value um, that the Republican Party, in, in my perception of it, springs out of more of this core value of personal responsibility, individual responsibility, that I need to take responsibility for my action. Mm. And that the Democratic Party more comes out of a communal responsibility, that we need to be uh, responsible for this wider community. And for me, both of those animating core values yeah, are scriptural. I think that's fair. Um, in that, you know, it, you know, Joshua in the Old Testament says, choose this day who you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, I'm personally responsible responsible for that choice. Right. Um, in 2 Thessalonians 3, Paul says, even while we were with you, we gave you this command, those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Sort of personal responsibility. Yeah. That is core in scripture. But so is communal responsibility from the sort of the democratic perspective. The Old Testament prophets yeah. again and again calling people to say, it's not just about you. You have responsibility for the, the widow, yeah. the orphan, and the friends, check it up, the foreigner in your midst. Absolutely. That you have responsibility for that wider community. So for me Both to and. say that one is the only cr biblical or Christian response is inaccurate because both animating core pieces are scriptural and yeah. that we have to live as Christians and as citizens of this country in the tension of both of those. Absolutely. And I kind of want to touch on this. So when when I was doing my research for this, I went back into a book by John Yoder, uh, The Politics of Jesus, mm -hmm. and it kind of speaks into this third option. And I just want to preface this by saying that um, John Yoder uh, has done some unethical things um, that I absolutely do not agree with. However, I do think it's important for us to take certain things and 
uh, take the good out of what some people have done and not throw the baby out with the bathwater per se, yeah. right? Like Martin Luther. Might have written some good things, but done some bad things. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm Martin Luther, whom we, our Lutheranism comes out of, right, is he was accused of anti-Semitism. And not accused John, of, he did. He was, yes. <laughs> and Jonathan Edward um, owned slaves. So there are these things that, you know, these things that are considered evil and wrong and not in alignment with God's kingdom. And yet... These are also people that really produce some things that I think um, help us understand God more and how to live in the world. And so I just want to preface that. Yep. Um, but uh, so John Yoder, he speaks into the politics of Jesus. And one of the things he says is Jesus had um, uh, a politic that was a kinship society. And so are you saying K-I-N-G? Kin, kin like family. Oh, K-I-N. Kin. Ship. Okay. Yeah. Good. And so, so like as there's Democrat, there's Republican, and yet we aren't to find our identity in those political parties, right? And so the values they have and hold, they are not something we live out of every single piece of it, right? Hmm. So even Republicans are like, I agree with all these things, but not this within the you know Republican Party or this idea or that idea or vice versa. However, in Jesus' politic, right, this kinship, our identity does come out of this. Our identity does come out of this politic. Who we are, how we treat one another is to come out of these beliefs. And so it's and it's all about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God that Jesus speaks into is all about this idea of the Jubilee year. And the Jubilee year was something that happened um, and every, I think it was, what is it? Every 50. Set, 50 years, right? And so that is when you forgive all debts. You know, you you are to leave your land so that the poor can, you know, glean from it. And you are to uh, release and set the slaves free that you have. Like all these really gracious giving, feed the poor, care for others, uh, house those if you have extra, you know. And, and so it's just living out of this way regardless of the cost. And so if it does come up against and butt up against the powers that be, then individually you do have a problem and you, you know, you become, mm -hmm. you know, an issue with the powers that be, the government, the, the established authority, right? Um, and that's okay. And you could lose your life. And yeah. so I thought that was really interesting as, as you say, you know, here's this individualistic approach, here's this communal approach. And then also when I well, hear Jesus would do this, Jesus would do that. Well, actually, Jesus has a kingdom approach and it's and it embodies little elements within our two parties, but it's even way bigger than that. Yeah, I, I think there is. Uh so much in this topic, so many different directions we can go. I'm so glad you lifted that up because people have reflected on those different things. And Jesus was sometimes asked to make choices about his yeah. interaction with the Roman government. And you really, he really took some nuanced approaches in the way he engaged that. So, yeah. um, and he didn't just sort of go, you know, down with Rome or he said, well, just do whatever they say. Um, and, and so I see this inherent tension within Scripture. So one of the other things that we had talked about ahead of this is you had lifted up Romans 13, yeah. where Paul says we are to obey the government officials. Mm -hmm. and, and there is this sense of saying that government uh, is instituted by God, and it is God's intention, um, that we need structure, that we need... Um, someone to enforce codes because sin is within us. And if you let everything go, it would it's be anarchy. like the Purge movies, and yeah, uh, oh, which I never geez. watched. But that freaks I, me out. That could, oh, that, I hope that never becomes a thing. Yeah. So the so I think there is that. But I remember at seminary being lifted, uh, this fascinating point being lifted up is um, one of my pro professors lifted up the contrast between Romans 13 yeah. and Revelation 13. I don't know if you've ever heard yeah. this, but where Paul talks about the government being of God and instituted by God, yep. in Revelation 13, it's talking about the government being the beast and um, and being of evil yeah. and needs to be confronted, needs yes. to be destroyed by God. And so I think as human beings, we live in this tension between Romans 13 and Revelation 13 that sometimes 
government needs to be just honored and respected, even yeah. if you don't fully agree. And then there are times where it needs to be resisted. You know, you're spe- and so that's something also in Yoder's book that you're speaking into. It's an apocalyptic social imagery instead of a humanistic. There's social your big uh, seminary word. There you go. Apocalyptic. So what that for what today. that means, right, is that yes, the structure and institution set is is something created by God for order and not anarchy. Absolutely. Yet we're a broken humanity, right? And the apocalyptic view is that there are principalities and powers and evils at work within these power structures through people, right? And so that's where the the battle comes. And so then when you have the, these evils within institutions that are powerful, it could make huge damage, right? And so that's that's what it's speaking into is is this idea and understanding that it's bigger, right? That that it's bigger than us. And so you know, no um, political party, no person is going to be able to save. We need yes. something bigger. Uh, and, and I remember, again, any of the good ideas I've ever had, I probably grabbed from someone else, you know, but a, a couple of elections ago, I lifted up this phrase that I heard from someone else that sometimes we talk about, elect. it, it sounds like people are talking that we're electing a savior. Yeah. We're not electing a savior. Right. And we then have we're all sa- disappointed when they don't. Well, exactly. <laughs> that we have a savior. I believe we have a savior in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. We are electing a short term political leader for a certain time in office. Yeah. That's it. And, yeah. and so we sometimes we inflate it to the point yes. where it is the end all be all. And so then we are, we lose rational perspective on it. Well, and it, it's our it's our misguided hope, right? Oh, yes, once this yes. person is there, then then everything will will straighten out. Then these things that I've been worrying about and wondering about or filled with fear about are going to all fall in place. And then it doesn't ever happen like that, right? And then they get a little frustrated and they're like, you know, this person didn't live up to my expectations. And the truth is, like, they're never going to. And I think we so often forget what is all throughout Scripture. And, you know, Matthew 633, God's will takes precedence over everything and every one. Yep. And we see in Daniel 434, no government can thwart God's will. And in Daniel 2.21, God who sets up kings also disposes them. <laughs> so, yes, there, you know, and and the truth that even if evil men or women are in p- political positions of power, right, and they, and they mean it for evil even, we've seen this with Hitler and different things, uh, different uh, people who've stepped in and really created a lot of chaos and hurt and pain within countries and God will take it because and and make good out of it somehow. God will work all things out for good, whether it's I don't know learning from that or, or different different things. Just open our eyes to a different way of being. You know that is our promise that we have to trust that God's going to take this horrible evil or this thing that has happened and and create good out of it because He even did that with the cross and yeah. with you know this Roman empirical crucifixion you know punishment. Yeah. He brought life out of it. And I, I want to, you know, this is a topic that can just grow bigger and bigger. I want to, I want to pull it back in Shrink a us. little bit. Shrink, Shrink it up. in. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to lift up in this is also this reality for me as Christians, that political decisions a lot of people make can be very self-centered. That I will vote no. for this. I will Get vote for this here. individual party because of how it will help me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm but, an American. Okay, okay, but here's it's all about the, me. But to me, this is where our Christian perspective should come in. I shouldn't just be voting on what works best for Kendall. That at some level, wah, wah. as a Christian, I think we should be looking beyond our own personal interests and ask. Given my view of this country, Mo, but let me you finish know here. What my You're tax about to write-offs are going to before that. That I should be looking and going between these two parties, between these yeah. two individuals. What is best needed for this moment? Are we needing more of a personal responsibility yeah. perspective, a communal responsibility? That I may vote one way or the other based on my reading of that, but you may read okay. it differently. And so, but it shouldn't just be about what is the best for Kendall. Yeah. What do I think is best for the country? Now, and in, in here again, Christians can disagree on that. Yeah. But the. I don't but know. That's I think that's pretty. To, I think that's pretty wise to really to step back and look at it like, okay, what do we need as a country right now? Yeah. You know. And it, and I just think we have to go beyond just the 
I mean, we live so much of our lives out of self-interest, but yeah, I just believe following Jesus calls me beyond that to not just what works best for me, but what do I think is best. And for then the we wider. use scripture and theology to justify our Whatever self-interest. Whatever we, you betcha. Yes. Here's the other place I wanted to dial this in a little bit is this whole thing of, you know, and we're, we're dropping this in the middle of an election season purposefully. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, that to me, one of the questions is when should you have yeah. political conversations? And uh, right before elections. Yeah. I well, can't wait to get all those comments by the bots. Yes. Who have very interesting <laughs> things to say. Yeah. We're wondering if this is going to have a warning on it uh, from YouTube. Um, be, but for me, in engaging that this in conversation, yeah. I think we need to ask when, yeah. where, and how that when should I have this conversation? You know, sometimes people have these political conversations is just hit and run. Yeah. I can't believe you're gonna vote like that and they yell something at someone and then they leave. Oh. And it, you know, and that's just sort of hit and run. It's not a conversation. No, you know, Do it when you have time. Do it when you can engage. If you're gonna like have a conversation. Like at a family function. Oh, at a family function, please, around the Thanksgiving dinner, that's when you want to do it. Um, no, I, I mean, Ecclesiastes says, for everything there is a time yeah. and for everything under the sun, a season for everything. We have to be wise when we That's have true. these conversations. I also think where we have these conversations, yeah. you know, having it in a public place where you're going to end up drawing a lot of other people in that can't engage you know, where you have a political conversation matters. Yeah. Um, or not I having it at Thanksgiving because, exactly. you know, because you want to be thankful for one another during that time. <laughs> at that time, <laughs> right. you bet. Yeah. Um, you know, I think putting up a yard sign is an appropriate place to say this is where this household stands. But I'm struck why I don't see more households where there's two different yard signs because there are two different viewpoints in that household. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I also think where to, I think people can, make political statements or, or offer political perspective on Facebook. But the question becomes is how we do that. So how would that be done well? Well, and this is where I think we need to do things uh, when we are making a statement yeah. um, uh, of a viewpoint, a political viewpoint. And if I'm a Christian and I'm making a political statement, I think I need to A, do it humbly recognizing the fact that maybe I don't understand all the dynamics. So should you I'm begin saying, by saying, I do not understand all the dynamics of this, but... Yeah, from my viewpoint, this is what I see. I think that humbleness, creating some sort of humbleness, that is acknowledging a Christian perspective to know that I'm seeing it from my viewpoint and I am a human being. Yeah. Sin's in me. It's not just out there. It's in me. Yeah. So I am HO, in my humble opinion. Yeah. <laughs> This is what I see. So I think some level of humbleness yeah. in our political statements is important. Um, I agree. Uh, the, what was, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I, again, humility. I think sp humility, speaking the truth in love. I just yeah. keep coming back to Ephesians 4.15. Am I doing this statement out of arrogance or am I doing it out of love? Because I want people to agree with me well, I mean, and they're not anyone, entitled to have a different if, opinion. Let me just say, if any of you think you're going to change anyone's opinion because oh. of what you post on Facebook, you're wrong. <laughs> you won't. You're not going to do that. That doesn't mean you shouldn't post something. Yeah. But, but it, don't let it enrage you when they disagree and then repost things. It, it, you're not going to change people. No. So, I mean, it's okay to state your political viewpoint, but state it humbly, speak it in love, and don't think you're going to change yeah. anyone. I and just I think, think it's important to, to do that self-reflection too. Like, why is it important for me to share this right now on social media or at this family function or with my, you know, loved one? Like, why, what is my purpose? What is yes. my intention? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it, I mean, it really goes to what what's driving this. Yeah. Why am I feeling compelled to do this? Because maybe it's not the right time. Maybe it's not the right place. Yeah. Maybe it's not going to be helpful to ask ourselves those questions before we engage that. Yeah. I think is just so important. Um, Absolutely. And here's another crazy idea. What if we actually put things out as a question rather than as a judgment? I mean, we've been talking about this yeah. and really drawn to this idea of curiosity versus judgment. Yeah. And I, I've been hearing this in multiple places, that if we come at things with curiosity, like, hey, I, I think you have this, you're in favor of this person. Why is that? And not like, 
why in the hell are you believing that? But saying, why, why are or you help me up? understand? Help me understand where because you're coming from. I, I, with I don't that understand where, that, yeah. and I'm curious. Um, if we really came with a sense of curiosity, yeah, I think that could could help. Could possibly, and and it, it acknowledges <clears throat> that. Maybe I don't see everything or that I just see things from my perspective. Or I think we need to be careful too. Where are we giving, getting our information from, right? So like everything has an agenda. A publishing company has an agenda. A media company has an agenda. And so is it coming from a certain perspective already? Then things will be skewed in alignment with that perspective. Yeah. And I think we have to look at things like that realistically as well. Proverbs eighteen thirteen. Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Yes. And tragically, there's a lot of that that happens. And where did you get your facts season. from? Yeah. Just be careful. Yeah. Well, and, and to double Online, check Online from this site. It, you know, Mo, there's a group that, um, that's been doing some work in this area. Um, that and it's a group called the After Party. Yeah. But I'm sorry to say after it's party. not Ooh, literally like it. uh, an I'm after party. I'm all about party. the after party. I know you are. Um, but this group is really about saying that for Christians, yeah. our discussions about politics maybe should be less about what yeah. than how. Yeah. That how are we having the conversations is more reflective of if we're following Jesus. Absolutely. See, that's what I keep going back to. It's like, whatever your opinions, whatever your views, wherever you have your facts from, we need to take that and work it back into the kingdom of God politic and go, how does it fit in here and how doesn't it? And that becomes the big conversation that I think needs to be had among fellow brothers and sisters, right? Well, and, and literally, how do we have the conversation? Are we having it with anger? Are yeah. we having it with arrogance? Or are we having it with humility? and um, listening and openness, Absolutely. that some of the how is maybe more important than the what. Absolutely. I would love to hear from you guys listening and watching us now, what has worked for you? How have you engaged in this topic of politics with those you love and care about um, in a way that was life-giving? Yes. Uh, help us to unpack this truth of how to do this and do it well. That's what we're trying to do, is yeah. look to scripture and look to each other to see how God wants to guide us. Uh, we encourage you to like, share, subscribe uh, to this podcast. If you think this is helpful, share it with someone else. If uh, Maybe that's another way to yeah. get a conversation going. And uh, Or submit a different topic. If you're like, please don't talk about politics <laughs> ever again. Submit a different topic, and we will talk about the topic that you bring up. How cool yeah. is that? Yeah. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Unpacking Truths. Next time on Unpacking Truths. That's where I had to really take a step back and realize, well, it wasn't just the Holy Spirit inspiring Paul to write to the Christians in Galatia. It was also these early Christian leaders continuing to pray, continuing to study, to keep coming back and to say, this is the true message of Jesus. And this stuff, no, this is, you know, chaff. This is not the essential. And so I believe it was the Holy Spirit, not just inspiring the writers, but inspiring those leaders to discern, this is what you really need. This is the essentials. You can let the other stuff go. Maybe it'll help you, maybe not, but don't put your, don't risk your life yeah. on stuff that isn't the core. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Unpacking Truths. If anything that we discussed sparked any ideas or you have any questions, we would love for you to go to unpackingtruths.com or you can also email us at unpackingtruths at lochurch.com. And don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to the podcast because you doing that allows other people to connect to this content and grow with God as well. Until next time, we hope you know that you are loved.